Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna start with another review of Tampa Pro and who deserved to win this show really. So I think this photo pretty much sums it up. And if you guys watched my previous videos and my community section as well, you know that I think Ian clearly won this show. Yes, I am a fan of Ian, not just of his physique, but of his personality as well, because I'm a fan of Fuad Abiyat's YouTube channel. That is true, I have to say, but looking at this photo right here, I think this sums it up, man. I mean, who else deserved to win? Phil Klahar, Charles Griffin? Come on, no, no. I mean, if you take a look at the legs, the lower body of Ian is destroying these two guys. I mean, especially Phil. And then the midsection. Is this supposed to be the winner of a show? Come on, guys. Today, I mean, after everything we've been through with bubble guts and stuff, this is punishable. This is not allowed in IBB. We do not want to see messed up midsections. Not anymore. The reason I'm talking about this is because of my comment section. A lot of people had negative comments about Ian's win. I don't know why, I don't know where is this coming from. It could be because he said some bad things. He heavily criticized Kai Green, Kevin Leveroni and some bodybuilding legends. A lot of people took that very bad. It could be that. It could be just the fact that people don't like his structure for some reason. And I'm not saying that he has the prettiest structure and yes, he doesn't have calves and his abs and tides is very poor. A lot of weaknesses, a lot of gaps in the physique, sure. But he was, by far, the most complete bodybuilder on this stage, the biggest bodybuilder on this stage, and he had good conditioning. Maybe he wasn't as crisp as Phil Klahar, but he was far bigger than him and more complete. I also did a voting poll, and a lot of you guys, 40% of you guys said that he didn't deserve to win this show. A thousand people voted in the last four hours, and that's 370 people said that he didn't deserve it. There is also this, it's kind of interesting from one perspective, but it's normal, it's, it's usual. Apparently Phil Klahar's coach is Phil Wiz. It's the same guy that coached Steve Laureus for this show, I'm gonna talk about Steve in a moment as well. But he, he, he also wrote this entire caption about uh, how he's proud of, of Phil, that he did a great job, blah blah blah. And he added, the entire crowd saw what they saw. Which means the entire crowd saw that Phil won this show. That's what he means, yes. Ian was kind enough to comment down below and to say good job guys, blah blah blah. But apparently Phil didn't feel like his client, Philip Lahar, should have played second. But instead he should have won this show. Now, a lot of people say uh, it's politics. Is it politics if somebody who you never heard about before comes into the show and takes second place? Is that politics? Charles Griffin is very popular too, Max Charles, a lot of people from, from this show were more popular, most of them really, than, than Phil Klahar, and he was second. But that's just one thing, and it doesn't really mean much, maybe he was better than everybody here, and the politics are the reasons why he didn't win this show, but I, I heavily disagree with that, guys, just looking at his pose, no way, look at the lag difference, look at the overall size, and look at this comparison that Bison Tries page made. Um, four poses, not all of them, yeah, but basically Phil Klahar won in two poses, and that's back double bicep and back lat spread, because he does have a tremendous back, and also he has really good conditioning. But Ian was not, uh, he was not lacking in conditioning department, he was shredded as well. As much as a bodybuilder can be shredded at that size. So look at the front lat spread, he dwarfs him, side chest, side tricep, look at the side leg and the tight waist on Ian and big arms and everything, it just, I don't think this victory is controversial, I don't think so at all, I think Ian absolutely deserved this win. Ian was 10 pounds bigger than last year, 10 pounds of muscle he added on his frame, that's very commendable, that's very, very, very that's insane, that's, that's really something that doesn't happen very often for a guy on that level, an Olympian, to add 10 pounds of muscle in a year, less than a year, that's, that's crazy, and it's gotta be, it, it has to be rewarded, it just has to. Just look at this photo again, he's not even closest to the camera, he doesn't have the angle, even though he destroys these two guys, I mean, just look at the legs, he completely annihilates them in legs. And then look at the thickness of the lats. His lats are just so full. And also midsection. Look at his midsection and look at the other two guys. The other two guys are just a mess in that department. Ian's midsection looks 
fine. Yeah, his chest is a little bit flat, but it's not so bad. I mean, the arms also are, are, are and the shoulders are giving him a lot of points, but I mean, those legs and overall the size, the, the thickness of his physique and conditioning. Here is this beautiful photo right here of him with his wife, Melissa Valier, former uh, Bumstead, Chris Bumstead's sister. Um, and Ian is not even flexing his glutes. He's just sitting, standing there, relaxed. And his glutes are showing striations and separations. So you know that he was lean. Yeah, this photo is a little bit edited, but it's a high quality photo. And you can see, come on, you can see the deep cuts, the deep striations, the vascularity all over his body. He was conditioned and he was the biggest and he had the least flaws of all of these guys. Pose for pose, he won this show fair and square. And I don't think there is really a need to talk about was there any controversy, was there a robbery, politics, whatever. But apparently a lot of people think so. Why? I have no idea, honestly. Maybe somebody made a video talking about that and a lot of people just uh, jumped on that hype train. I don't know, you guys tell me if you think something like that. But I just, I'm just saying what I see. Yes, I'm a fan of Ian, that is true, but I think I'm being objective. If you guys disagree with me, tell me down below in the comment section. Ian said that even if he wins Tampa, he wants, he maybe wants to do Texas too. Why? Because he wants to beat Steve Kuklo. Beating Steve Kuklo would definitely mean something, it would send a message, it would send a message that Ian is truly on that top top level, because Steve is one of the top top bodybuilders right now, when he's on, he's one of the top guys, and this year it seems like he's gonna be on, seriously on, look at his most muscular, and guys, this is a crab pose, this usually doesn't look very good on taller guys, and Steve is a little bit taller, He's actually very big in, in person, like he's not a short guy with a lot of muscle, he's a taller guy with a lot of muscle. So he's gonna dwarf some people and Ian should probably reconsider this plan because it might hurt his stock, as they say. So he just won Tampa Pro and that's good enough, he qualified for Mr. Olympia. Yeah, the thing with Ian is he gets better show after show, so maybe if he does Texas and then Arnold, then Mr. Olympia, he's gonna look the best at the Mr. Olympia. But your body can only peak so many times and maybe it's gonna be a bad thing for him. Can he beat Steve Kuklo though? It's not really easy to, to say. I don't think I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he, he can't. It really depends on what Steve brings, but if Steve is on, I think Steve is still a better bodybuilder than Ian. Yes, Ian does have a lot of freaky poses and I love the, the, the monsterish look that Ian has, but overall I think Steve is more complete. He is bigger, he doesn't have flaws like Ian's chest or back, he has full chest, he has good back, uh, all the poses of him are looking good, there are no weak poses like Ian has, there are no gaps really. For a taller guy, he can really pull off that most muscular, every variation basically, even hands on hips, that, that requires a lot of mass, that requires really big arms, and for a taller guy it's really impressive how big he actually gets how big he looks in the most muscular, and the, the back lat spread, look at the back lat spread here, it just flows so well, he is a good bodybuilder, one thing that I don't like about him is the, the depth of his striations, uh, of the cuts, his muscle looks kind of dead, you don't really see the cuts, the deep deep cuts, but it's just one thing, everything else is just good, so I still do think Steve Kuklo is a better bodybuilder than Ian. I would love to watch this battle, it would be a good battle, but I would bet on Steve. Especially after seeing this update. So he's really big, he's massive. At 8 weeks out, he's really big and he is super conditioned. He looks crisp. It's gonna be one of the best versions of Steve Kuklo, I'm guessing. And I don't think anybody can beat him. I think he's gonna win this Texas Pro, qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning it. And how well can he do the Mr. Olympia? You guys can tell me down below in the comment section, but personally, I think he is one of those guys who have a good chance of cracking the top 5, but we will find out soon enough. Steve Lorius. I said I'm gonna talk about him, so let's mention him real quick. Um, I saw when the Brit judging was happening that he's not on, that he was uh, soft, soft in water, yes, I said in my video, but I wasn't sure, was it simply him not dieting for long enough and trimming down all the fat? Or was it just a, a mistake in a peak week? And I actually asked him this and he commented, he replied before he removed all the comments. As you can see, this photo cannot be commented on. I asked him, 
what happened at this show why was he fourth i asked him is it a peak week mistake or is it simply conditioning not being lean enough and he said he was lean enough he wouldn't commit to a show if he wasn't and his body uh, retained a lot of fluid after flying but but guys i mean he committed to this show a long time ago so at three weeks out he was you know he looks like he's going to get ready but he wasn't sure if he's gonna get there so maybe he was lean enough for three weeks out but for a day of the show i think he wasn't i don't think this is just a watery look yes he is soft and he is watery but i'm thinking there is a layer of fat as well i think he could have been drier i think he can get just shredded peeled i don't think he was lean enough i don't think so i just disagree with what he's saying i could be wrong but i think so i think he can be leaner Maybe there is another reason for him not winning or placing fourth. Maybe it's the gyno. Look at the nipples. He has a pretty bad gyno at this point. He should do a surgery and remove that for sure. Overall, he does have a lot of muscle on his frame for a classic guy. Really, really small joints. Crazy small joints. And that's why you may think that he's actually uh, an open bodybuilder in some photos when he's standing alone. But compared to the other classic guys, you can actually see how big he is. And what is the most important thing, what makes him what he is, uh, it's, it's the shape, the structure. He really has a classic shape. Oh, look at this from double bicep. Wow, just, just really classic. And he's not doing it in any classical way. It's just a plane from double bicep and it just looks classic because he does have a classic physique. What he needs to do is nail the conditioning. I still am not buying it that he is just watery. I think he just needs to diet, suffer a little bit more, or do whatever it takes to get more shredded. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Do you think he was just watery, or was he just fat, you know, not lean enough? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. But I would love to see him shredded for once. Talking about the taller and bigger guys, here's Sergio Oliva, who looks insanely massive right here. <laughs> Look at his comment, by the way, I thought it was funny. I mean, the way he's addressing his fans... A lot of anger and bitterness coming from him on social media. I think that should be his nickname, Angry Sergio Oliva. <laughs> Just joking. He looks absolutely massive right now. And it's not really an illusion. He is actually a big guy. I think he was 280 or 285 at last year's Arnold Classic. So how big will he be this year? I asked him a question. He said he's going to be bigger. So what, he's gonna be like 290 on the stage? That's gonna be ridiculous. I'm really curious to compare him to some other guys who are shorter, like Nick Walker. We'll see what that's gonna look like, but right now, I mean, look at the size of this guy. Look at the mass and look at those delts. <laughs> he is as wide as it gets, as this guy in the comment section says, and he's trying to get even wider. Why? <laughs> is it possible? I don't think so. Look at his delts. So, so massive. We'll see what he's gonna bring at the Arnold Classic stage in only six more weeks, guys. Only six weeks left until Arnold Classic. So I'm really curious and excited to see what's gonna happen. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video and all the other videos. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. All the best and bye-bye.